Hey everybody, it's your man Tyke coming to you with another true spook story. Now before we begin, let me ask that you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share me if you think you're not robbery. Now, let's get into this story. Now this story is going to involve myself, but myself as a 16 year old, 17 year old. Uh, the details of this story is a little gruesome as well as spooky. So I'm going to ask that you uh, bear with me, ride with me, just stick it out to the end. I guarantee you won't be disappointed. I'm going to have to admit a couple names in here because as I say, this is about me and it's a real life story. Uh, I'm hesitant, but I'm finna go with it. So let's rock. Well, back in the late 70s, early 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, there was a group of uh, immigrants known as the Jamaican Posse. <clears throat> they was all over the world, I mean, all over the United States, typically in New York. Uh, it wasn't so many in Georgia, but mainly New York, uh, South Florida, Miami area. And the worst of the worst, I would have to say, came up here to the Orlando area. Well, the Jamaican Posse was known for all kind of marijuana selling, uh, drug dealings, prostitution. They wasn't a gang, but they was just a group of people, a uh, culture of people or group culture, you call it people that got together and say hey we can control the local cannabis market here and we are going to and <clears throat> you know what comes with controlling a controlled substance a narcotic uh, and cannabis was at that time probably still is to this day a federal crime to have a little bit but you know county and city laws they change it up but so the Jamaican posse of Orlando was carting in pounds and pounds, kilos and kilos of marijuana. And they was distributing this marijuana all over Orlando. You had to be that guy or that girl to get it. Uh, you don't know how many drug queens and drug kings uh, the Jamaican posse made of average black man, black woman. Sometimes I would see an occasional Caucasian or Hispanic uh, person in there, but they probably had their own thing going on too. <clears throat> well, so the Jamaican Posse was ran by this guy known as uh, Haitian Dread. Now, at that time, it was very uncommon for a Jamaican to integrate with an Haitian. It, it was two demographic, two different people, two ideologies. Neither one liked the other via stereotypes. I don't know what the deal was. But the leader, uh, this Haitian guy known as Haitian Dread, I don't, we never knew his real name, became the leader of the Jamaican Posse here in Orlando. And he ran it really good for a long time. He was selling marijuana to the Haitians. He was selling marijuana to the Spanish uh, Dominicans, that 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 Dominican Spanish, uh, <clears throat> and he was selling weed to the American blacks, let alone to his people. So, I guess because he was bilingual, trilingual, he knew what to do, and money was flowing. And he lived right there in the Malibu area of Orlando, Florida off of Ivy Lane Road. Well, let me tell you a little bit about, cause the story is gonna, uh, the story is gonna involve Haitian Dread. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Haitian Dread. Well, again, Haitian Dread was a Haitian guy and he loved Jamaican black women. He had him a house and he had three Jamaican black wives living up in that thing. Every woman you seen, he loved Jamaican. 
black women. He loved the Jamaican culture. He dressed in the Jamaican colors, the netted shirts uh, with the three to four colors on it, the hat. He even grew dreadlocks. He loved the Jamaican culture. So that's why he got the name, you know, Haitian Dread. So Haitian Dread had three Jamaican wives, girlfriends, whatever. And he loved to gamble, but he was such a sweet person. You would, you would look at him and you, he had the nice pearly white teeth, the dark skin and the dreadlocks. And you will never think that this guy was a drug kingpin of one of the most notorious gangs in Central Florida. But he was. So he would always have his girls, his ladies would drive his car. Uh, his lady would get his food. They would, anytime he sat down, one would be by him. They would hold the guns. And he was just a Tony, a Tony Montana, you know, Scarface motherfucker. But he had nothing but Jamaican women protecting him. And he was, boy, let me tell you, he was laying dick in their ass like it ain't nobody business. Because you'll go to his house to pick up some. He'll come out the room, dick swinging. Give me a second. <laughs> Give me a second. And you'll, he'll go back in there and finish up with her. And you'll be sitting in the living room here and all this. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, she bit you. Oh, oh. And we'll just laugh because he was always screwing. I don't know if the man had some kind of Viagra pill or electric battery hooked his nuts. But anytime you go to his house, the bitch is not fucking something. Well, so he'll come out and he'll just be nice and he'll offer you whatever you want to eat. And I mean, he just wasn't a typical drug dealer. He was just a nice guy. So you go there and he had became real friendly. And this ultimate was his downfall. But we're going to get to that a little later. So Haitian, Haitian Dread will offer people anything. He would buy the kids in the neighborhood school clothes rent get a big u-haul full of toys supplies pencils shoes and everything and just have the parents come there and fit your kids and go he was just that guy <sighs> well here is where the story get a little personal people well a haitian dread had linked up with my cousin uh a cousin i don't care for too much uh nobody should ever trust this cousin of mine so he had linked up with him and they had started, he has my cousin had started purchasing uh, weed from him in order to sell. My brother at the time had already had the weed game on lock because my brother had already built a connection with Haitian Dread and, and my brother like was a very high end weed dealer in Central Florida for a long time. But when my cousin got out of prison, he decided to introduce him to Haitian Dread, and that's where Haitian Dread spiraled down a little bit. And so my cousin is purchasing from Haitian Dread. He and Haitian Dread meeting up at the club, hanging out, I guess, because Haitian Dread was a nice guy. My cousin charmed him up. They was cooling. Well, Haitian Dread loved to gamble. That was his pastime, because when you in the hood and you got everything you need, what else you're gonna do is, is you're gonna gamble. You're gonna take a risk and gamble. He loved Russian roulette, a, a revolver with one bullet in the bitch, and spin it, and he would give you a thousand dollars if you uh, could take three uh, three trigger pulls in Russian roulette without killing yourself. And he would be pulling the trigger along with you, like he'll be playing the game, and if you get three, and after y'all each pulled three times and nobody got shot, then he'll like he go a thousand dollars and you were like his cool, his friend, you was the shit. But other than that, he loved to play dice. He loved shooting craps. So my cousin had got with him and they my cousin they were hanging out and my cousin and him began to shoot a game of craps. Well, Haitian Dread turned around and said, I gotta go. So Haitian Dread left my cousin there with a bunch of other Jamaicans. And the Jamaicans was like, we're gonna take your money and 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 the Jamaicans were playing fair. They wasn't cheating him when nobody's 
the rigging the dice. I mean, they have been crapping all night. They've been shooting craps all night. So, the 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 the, the, the dreads. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say Jamaican, cause I'm a real nigga. So y'all just gonna have to deal with what I'm talking about. The dreads is a stand-in word for Jamaicans, by the way. So the dreads, they was playing craps with my cousin, and my cousin was losing all this money. My cousin had lost about ten stacks that night. So after losing about 10 stacks, my cousin got all upset. And you know how shit talking go down when you're gambling, playing any kind of sport. The dreads was like, Bumba Clyde, you Ross Clyde, you lost, you suck your mama pussy. They were saying all that type of shit to him. And, and my cousin, he couldn't take losing. So he couldn't take losing. Get this, people. So he says, I'm going to get out of here. So after they done won the money and... The Jamaicans say it wouldn't give him a chance to win no money back. He like, come on, man, let me win my money back. Let me give me a chance to win my money back. And the dress was like, we done tried it three times, dog, and you keep losing. Go on about your business, now. Go on, come back another day. So my cousin ended up leaving the, the gambling uh, area where they were. And he goes away. He goes and dress in all black. He comes back, and he shoots up and kills the like four or five of the Jamaicans so when he shot and killed the four or five of the Jamaicans one of the Jamaicans yelled out his name while they was on their cell phone so everybody so the Jamaican posse knew who he was so now the Jamaican he figuring the Jamaican posse know who he is so now he's not going to purchase anything from Haitian Dread and Haitian Dread is looking at my oldest brother like, you brought this bitch into my circle, dog. You know, you just as liable. And my brother was like, hey, nigga, that's between y'all. I told you that sell him some dope and don't get to, I mean, just sell him some weed and don't get to know the nigga. But you, you thought he was cool and you hung out with him. He said, put that shit on you. And people, I'm not bragging, but in Orlando, my family ain't shit to be fucked up with. Those who know, know, you know, we ain't shit to be fucked up with. We're a deadly little bunch of idiots. Well, they are. I'm a great guy now. So, Haitian Dread say, okay, you always been cool with me. We're going to leave you alone. That's what he told my brother. But he said, your cousin is marked for death. You may know the, the, the word marked for death. That was a movie Steven Seagal played in. Uh, when the Jamaican posse went up against the uh, Predator, I, I think, yeah, Jamaican posse, Steve said, Steven Seagal went up against the Jamaican posse. That was a real word that the Jamaicans used to say back in the day, you mark for death. And that mean like the entire Jamaican clan posse is a kill on sight thing. It is what it is. So, uh, Haitian Dread, you know, sent out the word that my cousin was marked for death. Being that my cousin is a savage mofo, done hurt, done killed more people than cancer, I believe, he went around Orlando taking out all of the dreads. And he would see the dread at the stoplight, jump out, pop, 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 pop in the car, body found police. I mean, this dude had to take, my cousin had to take out at least 30 of these people. Speculatively or allegedly, that's the word we're going to say. So came time for this man to confront Haitian Dread. And Haitian Dread wasn't no soft nigga now. Nah. Haitian Dread was about business too. He'll put a bullet in your ass and walk on the next day. So he was like, hey man, you tried me. You know, you, you, I introduced you to my people and you fucked me over. And by the end, my cousin had gotten with a bunch of other American blacks that didn't like the Jamaican posse because it was a kind of like an ongoing war the Jamaicans against the uh, American blacks here in Orlando so my cousin had teamed up with a couple more idiots and formed his own little faction his own little clique Haitian Dread confronted him <clears throat> confronting him and his boys and then nothing happened right then on the spot but later on Haitian Dread was found murder now that's the backstory to the creepy part that's just the history of the the shit now back in the day 
all Jamaicans had these shoes. Uh, we in the south we call them bucks. Up north of us New York they call them wallabies, or the white folks they'll call them Clarks. Haitian dread loved bucks. He loved bucks, and he uh, and he loved this brown leather pair of bucks. So. Nobody knew how Haitian Dread passed away. He was just found dead. Everybody assumed it was my kinfolk. And so that he was marked for death anyway, allegedly. My cousin actually did, my cousin and his friends actually did take out Haitian Dread. Once they took out Haitian Dread, uh, they robbed him as well. They took the money out of his pocket, they took his clothes, and they took his shoes. He had on a pair of brown leather bucks, uh, wallabies. I mean, cause that's what you do in the South. When you strip a nigga bell, you gonna flaunt his shit, you know, to show that you real. You gonna wear his t-shirt, his hat, his belt, his watch, his necklace, all that type of shit. So, took his shoes, it didn't fit. So, I was getting ready to start school, high school, and I was about 16, 17 years old. So, my mom didn't buy me no shoes. I had a summer job, and she had took my money and shit, beat me up. You know how I go. Yeah, I grew up in the hood. We were poor, so parents ran rough shot over us. So I haven't even started selling dope or thinking about selling dope. But I saw that I didn't have no shoes or no clothes to start school with, and I didn't want to get clowned. And it's my junior year in high school. So I just went ahead and said, okay, I'm finna go do this. I'm gonna start selling dope. So I took a little bit of my little money I made from a little summer job and I went and bought a 50 pack. Down here, that's a that's crack rock, a 50 pack of crack rock. You cut it properly, you gonna get, you gonna double your money plus $10. So you gonna make $110 off of it. So $60 you're making and profit if you cut it proper. This is, that was the start of me selling my dope game, my dope, me being in the dope game. So, I ain't had no shoes to wear to school, and Wallabies at the time, or Clarks, or uh, Bucks, at the time, they was very expensive, so nigga had on a pair of Bucks and went to school. Bitch, you know, okay, you know, you ain't poor, you, you a rich nigga, you got some paper to, for your mama and to be able to afford this. So, my cousin came and he like, hey, you, you got a pair of shoes to start school with? And I'm like, no. He said, try these on. So I tried on the shoes, boom, they were a perfect fit. And I say, man, these bucks. He said, yeah, I got you, dog. He said, I got you, cuz. And walked out. So now I got some new shoes to go with my new fits. And I'm chilling. Keep in mind, I had just got into the dope game, too. And so um, I cleaned them up, wiped the bitches down. There was a couple of stains on them, but I didn't care. You know, I got the little suede brush, little suede spray. Shit, I did them up. Them bitches looked brand new. I, I scrubbed them bitches and... Got them bitches looking good, man. So school gonna start in about two more, three more days. Bitch, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm doing it. So I go to school, check in. I go buy my little 50 pack. I'm selling dope. I'm getting off the dope like it ain't shit. Boom, 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 money coming. I'm reing up to the next man. Boom, 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 money coming. Bam, I'm like, nigga, here you go, boom. Twice a night, $500 worth, and I'm flipping that shit a night. So I'm 76, 17, going on 18. I'm doing good, money coming, right? And I'm, I'm wearing these shoes. I never took the shoes off, except when I'm going to sleep, but I, I ain't even wearing no other sandals or nothing. It was all, it was, I always had on them bucks. Now, I didn't know these bucks came from Haitian dread. I didn't know I was wearing dead man's shoes, people. Uh, it's, this story is finna get a little interesting. So, clutch your pearls, hold your horses, grab your nuts. You in for the ride, baby. I'll grab her hand, too. Hell, if you're sitting next to her. So, now, I done hit the dope gang. I'm getting an education after school. I'm up all night grinding. Dope gang, take some sleep. I'm still going to school, get my books, because education is important. Now, everybody looking at me and everybody know that, okay, Tyke is a dope dealer now. My mama didn't know. I didn't want my mama to find out, but I'm pretty sure she knew because family and people talk. So now I'm making a little cash. I say, well, shit, I can start talking to these chicks. I'm making money. As long as I got on these shoes, I'm making money. I'm I'm scrapping with cats in the, in the parking lots at the club. I'm fighting people on the road. They jump out on me. 
I'm busting triggers and not getting shot up. And, and I mean, they jumping out on me, pop, 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 pop. And I had bullets flying all around me. I can't be touched. So I'm like, okay, yeah, that, this is it. That's what's up. So I'm doing all that shit. Man, lo and behold, my cousin, another one of my cousins, my auntie boy, we about the same age. He comes over to the house. And when he comes over to the house, he puts on the shoes. He like, hey, man, I'm going out to Club Diamond. Let me rock these bitches. And I'm like, nah, man, leave my shit alone. So as soon as he put on the shoes, because I had went to sleep, as soon as he put on the shoes, he go to the club. He get into a little altercation with somebody, and two or three dudes jump on him. Pop, pop, he end up whooping all they ass. And he come back chilling, so now I got blood on my shoe because I don't know did he kick him or whatnot. So I like, you know, so me and him get into it. I push him out the shoes and shit. Give me the, give me my shoe, nigga. Put the shoes back on. Now the shoes feeling different. Now I'm feeling different. I keep saying, hey man, I need to go buy me some more bucks. So now I'm spending all my money on these bucks, on these shoes. I'm getting every color, orange, green. They came in all kind of colors, line. And then I realized I started dressing like a Jamaican. I'm wearing the, the fish netted shirts. I'm wearing the Jamaican belt. I had grew my hair because I had dreads at the time. So I had I had on a big fat Jamaican hat that I stuffed the dreads in. And I'm just sitting up there wearing the little rope around my neck with the little Jamaican uh, biblical verses and charms. I'm turning into a straight Rastafari right here, you know. But in the drug game, I'm, I'm even looking like a Jamaican. And my mama and was like, boy, why are you looking? Why are you trying to act like them goddamn Jamaicans? You ain't Jamaican, you Bayesian. And I'm like, whatever. I say, it's just a style. Mama, be easy. So every time I put on the shoes, I want to act like a Jamaican. Say I'm 19 now. Three years I've been selling dope, having on these shoes, doing my thing, lucky, making money. I can afford some shit. Three years passed. My cousin that gave me the shoes, he come back over to the house. When he come back over to the house, he see me come out the room. Actually, like, got real scared. He got real scared, and he, like, fell off the couch, edge of the couch, and he, like, grabbed his gun. And my mama like, boy, what you doing with that gun? So my mama see me coming down the hall. Now, keep in mind, I'm dressed like a Jamaican, looking like a Jamaican. I'm just into this Jamaican vibe thing. And he looked at me real good before he pointed his pistol at me. He was like... Man, I thought you was somebody else. He said, he, he called the dude Dollar. He said, Dollar, Dollar, come here. Dollar come walking in, boom. My mama house, boom, open the door. What? He said, who did nigga look like? And they looked at each other and went to laughing. Bitch, you look like Haitian Dread. I say, what? No, hell no. I say, that nigga old. Keep in mind, my mind ain't clicking. And I don't know I'm wearing Haitian Dread shoes right I say no nah. so they like yeah boy you say boy you better change your look up for a bit thank you him and hurt you and I'm like nah ain't nobody gonna do no shit like that so they laughing at me they laughing at me so they know what's going on keep in mind I'm not understanding that Haitian Dread is, has passed away they know they had killed him they know they had did whatever they did I don't know I'm just thinking they done bought me some shoes so the shoes that I had on was Haitian Dread shoes on the night that he got killed. So every time, as long as I had those shoes, people, I was lucky. I was making money. I was doing my thing. It was nothing. It was nothing that I couldn't do. I'm like, it was nothing that couldn't come to me easy like that. And then I, just by me being in the dope game and I had got so good at it and I was so good at selling dope, it was just a, a it was like a magical miracle spell in itself. So I said, okay, okay. So finally, Dollar was at the house. Dollar had got on some weed and some coke and some drink, and he was out there talking to my female cousin because he was trying to knock her down. So then he was like, boy, you, you still got them shoes after three years. I said, yeah, man, these bitches right. I said, I bought some more in there, but I just keep running back to these. He said, you know who shoe them here you got? I said, no. I said, Cub gave them to me. He said, you remember Haitian Dread? 
I said, yeah, Haitian Dredd, nice smile. I said, he cool, man. I said, Haitian Dredd used to drop all the kids school money when we were going to middle school. He said, he'll wait at the corner and just hang out and give us school money and shit, lunch money. He was like, dog, because he was hot, dollar was hot. He said, dog, them Haitian Dredd shoes, man. We killed that nigga. And we, when we killed that nigga, we robbed him. And you got the same shoe size, so we gave you the shoe, nigga. You wearing Haitian Dredd shoe. And I'm like, what? No. And people, that's the shit. That was the craziest shit because I'm wearing Haitian Dread shoes. I'm starting to look like Haitian Dread. Y'all see the correlation here. So I say, no, nah, this shit can't be happening. So, you know, I go to Grandmama. I'm like, Grandmama. And without me telling her what my cousin did, I ain't trying to snitch on her. I say, Grandmama. I say, what if you wearing a dead man's shoes? What had happened to you? She say, you typically act like the dead man pick up his traits. And she was like, but don't ever put on a dead man's shoes because he get to walk around and live in your body. You ain't yourself. I say, say that again, Grandma. He say, yeah, if a nigga die with their shoes on and you put on them shoes, he say that you'll be you'll be living out that man's last motherfucking wish. Say, so what the fuck you asking me that for? I say, Grandma, I say, you remember Haitian Dread? She say the nice dude with the nice smile because he had a great smile. I say, yes, ma'am. I say, well, they say this is supposed to be your shoes. And she's like, well, how you get his shoes? I say, I bought them. I say, I bought them from one of his girlfriends. She's like, you need to take them motherfucking shoes off and burn them bitches. You need to take them off and burn them because you don't need to be around. You don't need to be wearing his shit. You're going to end up just like him, shot dead in the street or a dope kingpin in prison. And I say, yes, ma'am. I ain't get rid of the shoes, people. I say, fuck that shit. So I kept chilling, kept wearing the shoe and shit. So now I'm just on my P's and Q's. So now I'm knowing why I'm jumping in. I'm getting hit by jump out boys. Now I know why I'm so good at selling dope because the spirit of Haitian Dread was sitting out there protecting me because he was living through me trying to get his last little bit of life out of me. And I'm 17, 18, down to 19 now. So that one, the creepy part. Here go the creepy part. So remember I told you Haitian Dread had three chicks that he used to deal with. I was a kid, and as I grew up, I'm 1920, I had sex for the first time at 18 years old. So I was a virgin all the way up until the 18. So now, hate the ladies who used to date Haitian Dread. They see me at the at the Big B corner store. They see me off Five Lane Road at the corner market, Magic Fry and shit. And they walk up to me and they just hugging me. And when they see me, they would cry. And so I'm like, hey, how y'all doing? And they were like, type, you so cute, you so handsome. They said I knew I was type, but they had an affinity to me. So I ended up knocking off at least two of Haitian Dread old girlfriends as a 19, 20-year-old man. And they didn't know why they were doing it, but I didn't know I was going over there to their house and I was screwing these chicks. And I'm just being transparent, people. It is what it is. I'm a real nigga. Y'all got to deal with it. If y'all don't like what I'm saying in this bitch, click off. Real nigga shit here. So I end up knocking off two of the chicks and they knew it. So they come over to the house. Okay, I come over there. You know, they know exactly what they want. Go in the room, boom, boom, boom. I'm doing my thing. One go to work in the morning. Come over in the daytime, I'll let you. Okay, boom, go over there, knock her off. Boom, 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 boom. And this shit went on for like two, three months. And they used to like go to my mama house, drop off food. They would go to my mama house, drop off a little money to my mama to help her with the light bill. They was like literally taking care of me like they were taking care of Haitian Dread. So I'm like, this is fucking wild. So, you know, I'm having the best time of my life around this bitch. I'm making money, fucking hoes, all that shit. I'm having the best time of my life. So I ended up staying the night at my daddy's house for like a week or something. I go to sleep, I change the shoes, and I like go stay at a chick house, and I left the shoes there because it was nighttime. She came to pick me up. When I get back, I couldn't find the shoes. I don't know what my dad did with them. I don't know if my dad's wife at the time did something with them. But I couldn't find the shoes. So I'm looking for the shoes, looking for the shoes. So shit, they life do go on. During that two, three years, I ain't had the shoes. My life went to shit. I was getting into it when my baby mama, child support got involved. I got arrested for something I ain't even do. A couple of times I got arrested for the shit I did do. I'm sitting out there knocking hands, 
knocking jaws, getting into fights with people, man. I mean, it got real crazy. So then all that evil shit kind of wore off on me because I forgot about the shoes. Fast forward, I'm about 31, 32 years old now. My dad is moving out of his apartment and he's moving into another house. So I'm helping my dad move, pack it up, and good lo and behold, guess what I seen? I seen the shoes. I said, man, you been, I said, where the fuck the shoe been? He like, oh, that shoe been here. I said, all right, all right, no problem. I said, do you mind? He said, oh, yeah, take them. I don't want them. I said, you can't have them. So I got the shoes back. So I keep in mind, I know all the shit that came with the shoes, and I instantly put them bitches back on. Instantly, I get a call. Hey, man, you still in the game? You doing this? Come help a nigga out. Come help me pull this lick on a bit. Come over here and hang out. That by now we got cell phone, Prime Co and Motorola. So now I'm sitting up the people like, yeah, oh look at you, tight, you're looking good. So all my luck is changing again, nah. But not in the good way, but then my luck is changing for the bad way in the in the motherfucking dope game, in the street game. So I'm like, fuck. So now I know the power these shoes possess. So again, I need a little bit of change. I say, okay, well. Haitian Dread, if you here with me, rocking with me, protect me while I do this. So I'm sitting out there, boom, I'm making money again. I'm getting in places, talking to the dope man, the weed man that I can never talk to. You know, I'm just an average nigga on the street. What the fuck you talking to the head nigga for? You know, the Jamaican Mafia or the Jamaican Posse, before they change, change their name to Jamaican Mafia, the Jamaican Posse, they was sitting out there and they had got cool with me. Like, man, you all right? I'm driving around. I'm running little errands. I'm dropping little weed off here and there to this spot, that spot for them, going to the swamp. You know, I'm like an errand boy for them, getting their cars that they done had chopped up and driving them to their house, dropping them all. And I I was just cool. So that lasts about two years. Nigga got on his feet, started doing good. I'm like, it was, it was nice, a nice fucking life. So I began to say, you know what, I got to change my shit. I got to start working for real. You know, I got kids. I just got customer chilling. And these are real stories, by the way. So I'm putting y'all in my business. Just got customer chilling. I said, let me get right. So I took the shoes off and I said, I'll never wear these shoes again. So I wrapped them up. I put them up in the shoe box. Stuck them up in my closet. Everywhere I went, people, I carried those shoes with me. I never put them on. And you know what the fucked up surprising part about this right here? I still got those same shoes today. And I'm going to insert a picture of these shoes on this thing. So you'll actually see. I literally was wearing these shoes a year and a half ago. No, I'm sorry. I started back wearing the shoes uh, when I when I was getting a divorce from my ex-wife. I was sleeping in my car and I was looking, praying to every kind of God it was. The Baron was on my team, and then I put on the shoes because I'm like, I'm going to get right and do this shit. And this is in 2017. I put the shoes back on. Again, I end up getting a $10,000 check from my program. I end up finding thousands of dollars walking up the side of the road. Paid my car off. Got contracts. I was getting booked for motivational speaking gigs in Central Florida. I mean, it turned into a real deal thing. So I said, I got to take these shoes off because I could get addicted to it. So I took the shoes off and I put them in the box. And lo and behold, they still up there in my closet in the box right now. And if I ever fall on my dick, people, you know what I'm going to do? Put them bitches on. I'm finna sign off on y'all ass. I'm tight telling you guys, go ahead and wear dead man's shoes. You just might live a little longer. Y'all take care, everybody. God bless. Stay safe.